No opening gag today, I actually have something to confess. See, unfortunately, I decided that it'd be a good idea to just go ahead and record the second part of last week's Blind Box Blitz right after recording the first, and then I just post the footage up accordingly. Unfortunately, between then and now, I have been prepping for Metrocon, which includes wiping memory cards, aka the footage doesn't exist anymore. But we're not going to let Chance's generosity go to waste. I'm still going to do all the stuff that he sent in that box, and that is going to make this the most random of random reviews ever as I go through the stuff that was in all of those other blind boxes and something that was very conspicuous in that box that I've never actually reviewed before Hot Wheels which I she's I, I never I never expected this to end up on my channel in any way shape or form so yeah there were four blind boxed Hot Wheels figures in that box so let's go ahead why not because this is really silly of me to review a car that doesn't turn into a robot Alright, so first one was this one. This was actually the first one I opened up, and it's a very pretty metallic blue. Still quite heavy, and yeah, as Hot Wheels go, still rolls exceptionally well, which is pretty much the only play value you get out of Hot Wheels, so they better do it well. Nice roll bar design. It's got that kind of uh, Le Mans-style racer look that I like. No dome bubble, so it's a little bit old school in that sense. Uh, and a lot of three, a lot of black deco, a lot of tampographing. So that's not a bad thing. I also dig the big spoiler. Here's the thing. Um, I did some research. The nice thing about not doing these as a blind box blitz, at least technically not one, is I've actually had time to research all of this stuff. And apparently, this is an old mold, according to the copyright stuff. 2000. Riley and Scott Mark III. I found out there's like four different ones of this vehicle in existence, this being the fourth. So apparently Hot Wheels Mystery Boxes just means let's repaint random old molds lying around and, you know, just spit them out in a blind box and just hope people actually buy them. Which I've heard of worse money-making schemes when it comes to blind boxes. At least these are different molds. You know, at least this is a mold that wasn't offered in a long, long time. At least I think so anyway. So yeah, that was interesting. And then we have this one, which I'll go ahead and show you off, is... Another old mold called the Zotic 2002 this time, so two years newer. This done in a metal flake color with translucent yellow windshields and chrome done up for the rear engine section. And this time, this kind of like laser line effect on the side tires, which is quite cool. Tampographing on the side, very sharp, very speed liney, and tiny little Hot Wheels logos inserted. It's not a bad design. Very futuristic, very concept car. I don't recognize this as any actual model, though. Uh, again, research does wonders. I didn't really find anything. This might just be something they originally created. But again, as Hot Wheels go, all I really expect to do is roll well, and it rolls exceptionally well. So that makes it a good Hot Wheel. At least I presume. I have no idea what to judge Hot Wheels by. Watch Hot Wheels like people on YouTube be like super militant about getting every single thing exactly right and we move on with another one and this one is actually an authentic car model and it will actually tell me which one on the bottom let's see ford shelby corv no i can't even read it gr1 concept hmm go figure so yeah we have a shelby and it's nice it is nice it does kind of have that you know where i get kind of uh, Corvette from is that long front end or, you know it's very racer style in that way um yeah not bad it's a deep deep shade of green obviously and the stripes along the top with the flame deco it's a little bit movie optimus in that but hey I'm just looking for whatever I can in here chrome toward the back and a very tiny little Ford logo on it that's exceptionally small detail to include so, credit to them. I don't know why they didn't even print the Hot Wheel logo on the bottom. I guess it's something they used to do and they decided not to do it for the blind box. Uh, we go cheap, even on the most cheap of repaints and repacking. So, yeah, it's not a bad thing. Uh, once again, uh, at least it's different. Uh, it one thing I can say, as far as a blind box series go, as little cars go, that's all very different. And then there was the biggest surprise out of the batch, which was a Batmobile. This was kind of nuts. At the time, I related this little story where the last time I'd actually bought a Hot Wheels toy was 
during one major hurricane here. This was years and years ago at this point where I'm at the gas station. I'm fueling up. I'm, you know, getting all the last minute stuff out of the way that you do when a hurricane's about to hit. And I just looked over p past the register to the Hot Wheel counter and thought, there's a Tim Burton Batmobile up there that would make me feel much better in the impending natural disaster. So I ended up going home with that, and that's literally the last time I bought a Hot Wheel. And look, I get another Batmobile the next time I encounter the toy line. Jet black, laser blue lines, and nice chrome coming up the sides. Very sleek, very low profile, as you expect a Batmobile to be, as well as a black-topped engine poking through there a little bit. And then big chrome to the back. With a bit. It looks like a giant cow catcher or something. Like if someone rams into the back of you, it's going to end very badly for them. This is actually from the CG anime. No, no, the sec no, no, not the CG one. It's the previous one. The Batman. I was thinking of you wear the Batman for a second. No, it's The Batman. Uh, this, the, uh, the other WB Batman cartoon that not as many people talk about. That's where this one's from. So that's, again, cool thing to research because I didn't recognize it when I first opened it up. So maybe it was best that I actually had a little bit of time to uh, do some digging. So yeah, that was weird. Two times encountering a Batmobile on that toy line, just out of happenstance. Why not? So beyond that, let's see, what did we move on to? We moved on to uh, more of the... Uh, uh, the last time I did uh, these little tiny bobbleheads that are coming out for Marvel characters and they also do Mega Man now so we open up with those with a tiny it almost fell out of my hands because he's very tiny bodied little tiny bomb man they did a whole Mega Man line that includes the original Robot Masters the Yellow Devil X and Sigma uh, Mega Man roll all of them and <laughs> I remember I actually had a whole box of these on pre-order because I really want that X and Sigma. I really want a lot of them out of that because they're kind of adorable. But yeah, uh, Bomb Man was the first one cracked open. I like that he has a little bomb. Typically, th these designs... Man, I'm forgetting the series name offhand. I can remember the models of these cars, but I cannot remember uh, the toy line this comes with. Don't tell me in the comments. By the This time, I'll probably have corrected it and put it in the uh, description. Oh, believe me, I'll be aware. But they all have a generic body that they share, and they're just painted up to match. A little bit like Mighty Mugs in that way. Except Bomb Man gets a little bit special because he gets to hold his bomb and gets a little bit of uh, asymmetry out of it as well. He's looking kind and kind of mean. Like, he's definitely wanting to throw it, but he doesn't have elbows in this mold, so he doesn't get to throw it. The other ma Robot Master I got in that set was Iceman. I really like Iceman. He's probably one of my favorites of the original Robot Master designs. Looking very grumpy here. This is a little bit out of character for him, at least the brief characterizations of him that I'm aware of. I mean, at the very least, he does at least look nice next to his fellow Robot Masters. And like I said, all six of them are in this wave, so yeah, it'll make a nice little joined set, I think. At least someday. It's something to shoot for. What I liked about this was actually has detail on the back that you typically miss, like this little can on the back that looks like a rocket pack. I'm going to assume it's coolant. And then this buckle on the back of his parka. That's a little bit strange. I don't recall seeing that unless he's taken a little bit of design from, I don't know, maybe the character model from, uh, from the PSP remake where they had the whole body CG modeled. Maybe it's from that. I'm not sure. But yeah, it's a cool little design. I just wish he wasn't so grumpy, you know. Doesn't really suit the cutesy design he's got going. And then we had, uh, unfortunately, one of the ones that I wasn't thrilled about at first because I want Robot Masters. I want X and Sigma. I get Beat. <laughs> Beat, who is one of the few who does defy the design premise behind that toy line by having no body and being just the head. So yeah, this is Mega Man's little bird sidekick that uh, debuted in, I want to say, Mega Man 5. Because he needs a little more, more uh, little animal helpers. Just save it. And this one is literally just his helmet with a beak. <laughs> it's always amused me. It's like Beat's design seemed uh, a little bit weak compared to Rush, but it's actually pretty well rendered here. He's got his little claws molded to the bottom, and it looks like he's perched onto something. It would have been nice instead of a body to have like a little display perch that he sat on. Uh, toward the back, he's got a thruster up his butt. 
So that's always a good thing. And yeah, the wings are nicely detailed. You can see the individual feathers and whatnot. So yeah, nothing really bad about that. I will say he's about the size I need for a beat to go in with my uh, figure art slash D arts Mega Man because he came with Rush, but no beat. So yeah, we might as well put him up there. It's, at least the aesthetic is close enough. I could probably get away with it. So yeah, the Mega Man ones are nice. Anything Mega Man is good in my book, and, except a few of the games. But beyond those, and then to wrap up the whole thing, there were two of the uh, two of the action vinyls for the Power Rangers movie. And I don't mean like the current movie. I mean like the old school one with the Ninjetti and uh, going to an alien planet and the original cast and all that. Uh, I have to explain all that because it's going to get really confusing in a second. Uh, for starters, I did get the Black Ranger, Adam. Now, this is basically... I want to say a res I wanted to say a re-sculpt, but there are plenty of new parts on this guy. And imagine a few things like the boots and the belt and whatnot are re are reused. But uh, yeah, everything is sculpted to match the movie costume. You will notice the plastic is a little bit strange looking. For some reason, they decided this series should have translucent parts on some of the figures. I'm going to assume I missed a series where everything is in solid plastic and that this is just how they decided to do uh, a second wave. Uh, that does make the helmet really awkward, because um, I can see Johnny Young Bosch inside there. I, it's a little bit weird, but yeah. Also, thankfully, his eyes do line up to where the visor would be. Otherwise, this would be really awkward to explain. Say, like, how do you see out of that thing? But yeah, he's got the designs from the movie. He's still rocking the Mastodon. Has not quite become the frog yet. Also, wielding a gun that he did not have in the movie. Almost nobody had weapons in the movie of any kind, gun or otherwise. Yeah, they did away with his uh, trusty power axe and... I don't know. Can't even remember what they gave. They they usually gave everybody a trick, like headlights or scanning visor. I don't think the Black Ranger got anything now that I think of it. So yeah, articulation goes as standard. Ball joint in the head, ball joint in the shoulders, as well as in the torso. Mm, he shakes his hips pretty good. And speaking of, ball joints in the hips as well. And then the gloves and boots are just swivel jointed. Uh, no real back and forth or anything, just rotate as needed. For a little guy, not bad articulation. And it feels better than it did on the previous series. I had a Billy from the previous series that, uh, that did not, didn't feel as good as this one did. So I think they made some adjustments to how they were designed. And also, the helmet does come off, so we can actually see the head of... A very strange Johnny Young Bosch. It's a little bit awkward, but hey, at least at least they didn't just straight up repaint Zack. I would have expected worse out of cheaper toy lines. So yeah, you go over there, and uh, here, I'll give you your helmet too. And then there was the biggest surprise, because I was looking at the box and looking at all the ones that I could have gotten out of that series, and there was one that just jumped at me. That's the one I want. And guess what? For once on a blind box blitz, I got the one I wanted, and it isn't on film. I'm so annoyed. We got the Tyrannosaurus Dinozord. Now, this is where it gets a little bit confusing, because this was part of the movie line, but, as you know, those dinosaurs did not appear in the movie at all. So instead, they've redecoed a previous wave's dinosaurs with little purple Ivan Ooze ooze blotches and that apparently makes him movie based i don't know why there's a whole bunch of them in the series where uh the movie cast done up in normal plastic but with the ooze splattered on them so it was supposed to be a movie tie-in thing it really disappointing but really weird way of uh reusing a mold and making it movie based but yeah, let's see, uh, this little tiny Tyrannosaurus, I think there's something adorable about this that I'm really into. So it head rotates, mouth opens and closes, well it doesn't completely close, but you can open it to a better degree at least. Arms waggle up at the shoulders, hips go back and forth like so, knees go back and forth, nothing's ball jointed, so don't expect magic out of this guy, but hey, it's better than the original toys, isn't it? Waist has rotation, tail can go up and down. So he does have enough articulation to make him interesting. And hey, he's detailed nicely enough. This does make me wish I had 
the first series one that didn't have those purple blotches. I'm going to have to go paint over them or strip them from where they are, have been painted on just to get the Dino Zord. I actually won out of them. But hey, it's actually kind of neat. This tiny little T-Rex just kind of chilling out. He's found a permanent home on my desk too. So I had to drag him down for this. But hey, that was a really cool surprise. And yeah, one of the few times on Blind Box Blitz, I got the one I wanted the most out of a series. So what do we think? Um, the Hot Wheels are about as good as I remember them being as a kid. Um, it's nice to know they haven't cheapened out. They're still die cast, pretty heavy, and roll extremely well. Uh, the little Mega Man bubble-headed guys, it's a cute enough aesthetic. Um, I could have done better as far as draws go, but two out of six Robot Masters isn't a bad start to that little collection. And I still have X and Sigma to go after. And yeah, I think that was a good range to show off the two types of figures you can get in the Action Vinyl Power Ranger line right now. I do wish they did something a little bit more creative than just reuse the Dino Zords that weren't in the movie and just, just blotch them up. But I guess you do what you have to do to get some more mileage out of your molds. So that is the rest of the Chance box. So thank you again, Chance the Iron Yeti over on Twitter. Uh, this has been fun, and again, thank you very much for the generosity. Uh, blind box blitzes don't seem to do well on the channel, but I have fun doing them. So I'm going to keep doing them because, hey, it's my channel. I'm going to do what I think is fun. And hopefully I'll be getting a hold of a bunch more blind boxes soon because Metrocon's tables are full of them. So the next set, uh, who knows how random it'll get.